Hello everyone and thank you for attending this virtual presentation. In this presentation, I will talk about the effect of nonlinear image distortion in flexible fiber optic endoscope and their effect on horizontal measurement. Laryngeal images are very important for clinical evaluation and also for doing basic science research. So for example, we can use images for direct observation and studying of the phonetic mechanism. We could use them for doing functional assessment of the phonetic mechanism. We could use them for determining the, eti the etiology of the voice disorder and the type of a lesion. And we could use them for direct evaluation of the intervention outcome. Additionally, if we are able to make measurement on the images, we could, for example, compare size of a lesion pre and post therapy, and that could advance evidence-based practice in the film. We could also study developmental aspect of the vocal fold and also study kinematic and biomechanic of vocal fold vibration. At the same time, we could measure we could measure like length of the vocal fold and different like configuration and derive computational model that could help with advancements of personalized medicine in the field. So let's start with the motivation. So here is a map of New York and basically there is a simple task that we want to do. Basically we want to say if distance between AB is a smaller or if distance between CD is a smaller. So by looking at this image, uh, we could tell that definitely the distance between AB is much smaller than distance between CD. Now, if we are asked a different question, let's see how we can answer that one. If now we are asked to say, what is the actual distance between point and A and B? Basically, by looking at this image, we wouldn't be able to answer that question. However, if we, have, if we are provided with some extra information, if we are provided with conversion scale of the map, we could measure length of AB using a ruler, multiply it with the scale, and then give a good estimation of the actual distance between A and B. So based on this small experiment, we say that images are not calibrated. So it means that we could not say what is the actual size of an object in the image. However, often we could compare size of different objects within the same image. Now let's do a different experiment. So here we are provided with a map of world and we are asked to say if Greenland is larger or Brazil. So by looking at this image, we would definitely say that Greenland is several times bigger than Brazil. However, if we look at their actual area, we see that Brazil is much bigger than Greenland. So now the main question is why in previous slides we were able to correctly compare uh, point AB with CD and say that AB is much smaller than CD, but not here. So the short answer is that on this image, things are not linear, or we could say that there is a nonlinear distortion associated with the image. Uh, or equivalently, we could say that if we select a line one centimeter on Greenland, we should multiply it with a much smaller number comparing to the time that that line has been selected on the Brazil. So basically, the conversion scale that we saw in previous slide, it was constant for all spatial location of that image. But here we have a conversion scale that depends on the spatial location, on the spatial location of the object. So in this study, we want to see if such nonlinear distortion exists in laryngeal images, and we will specifically focus on flexible endoscope. And this is very important and relevant for the field. Let's say that we have compared size of a lesion pre and post therapy, and we see that the length of the lesion is changing in the image. So, but if there are nonlinear distortion, could we really conclude that the actual size of the lesion was reducing after the therapy? Or for example, how we accurately could evaluate uh, bowing of the vocal fold from the laryngeal images if there are nonlinear distortion. Your total area is, an, is a very uh, popular measurement from high-speed video images, but if there are nonlinear distortion, the area that we are computing is going to have some error inside. And also any kind of other subjective assessment or objective measurement from the images could be impacted with existence of nonlinear distortions. So the ultimate goal of this research is to drive a map-like scale for laryngeal images. And in this study, we will call that a scale the millimeter size of a pixel. 
So the specific aims that we are trying to address in this study is to investigate if nonlinear distortion are possible in flexible endoscopy, and if they are present to quantify their impact on subsequent horizontal measurement. There are two research questions that we are trying to answer in this study. First, how much millimeter size of a pixel depends on its spatial location? And the second research question is how much the imaging angle affects the millimeter size of a pixel? In order to answer the research question, we are going to use a set of benchtop recordings. So for that, we are, we are using a setup. So there is a high-speed camera that is connected to a flexible fiber optic endoscope. Uh, there is a there is an adjustable arm that moves in the up and down direction. Basically, that will change the distance between target surface and tip of endoscope. We will call that working distance in this study. Also, the setup allows the target surface to be tilted, so the angle between the endoscope and the target surface could also be changed. So we will call that tilting angle in this study. We use a set of calibrated square grids as the target surface. So this figure is showing the square grids and this figure is showing the results of that grid after being recorded on the camera. So then we applied an automatic method for segmentation of all of these lines. And this figure is showing the result of segmentation. So in this original image, we see that all of these lines are parallel to each other. However, in the final image after segmentation, we see that parallel lines are becoming bending and bowing, and they are no longer parallel with each other. The aim of experiment one was to establish the dependence of the pixel size on its spatial location and then to quantify that. So for this experiment, we created two different groups. So one group corresponded to the block that were in the center and the other one blocks that were on the periphery. So we run the experiment for four different working distances of 5, 10, 15, and 20 millimeter. And uh, we computed the value of pixel size, which was the length of a grid in millimeter. We know the length of each of these lines because it's a calibrated paper. So we know, for example, each of these lines is one millimeter divided by the length of each of these highlighted lines from the image. So the hypothesis was that the pixel size is significantly smaller in the center group than in the periphery group. In order to test uh, first hypothesis, we ran a two-way ANOVA. So the dependent variable was millimeter size of a pixel, and the independent variable were groupings and working distance. So based on result of ANOVA, we see a significant main effect of grouping. We see a significant main effect of the working distance, and also we see a significant interaction effect. So by looking at this result, we could conclude that there is a significant effect of grouping or millimeter size of a pixel depends on its spatial location. In order to quantify its effect, we ran a different analysis. Basically, on and this figure is showing the result. On the x-axis is the distance of a pixel from the center, and on the y-axis is the pixel size. By looking at this image, we could make the following conclusion. Basically, the center has the minimum value of pixel size, so we could say that center of the image has maximum spatial resolution. Uh, and at the same time, because this uh, center has maximum spatial resolution, if an object is in the center, it will appear bigger in the image compared to the time that the same object goes to the periphery. We see that uh, these lines, these curves, are symmetric around zero. And finally, we see that the magnitude of uh, curvature or dissimilarity between periphery and the center increases as the working distance increases. So in second experiment, we wanted to study and quantify the effect of tilting angle. Basically, now there are three groups, so groups that are on the center, groups that corresponded to the front of the setup, and groups that corresponded to the back of the setup. The working distance were changed from 5, 10, 15, and 20, 20 millimeter, and now we had seven different tilting angles. So again, we computed the value of pixel size, and the hypothesis was that pixel size is significantly different between back, middle, and front groups when the target surface gets tilted. In order to test uh, the second hypothesis, we ran a three-way ANOVA. So the dependent variable was the millimeter size of a pixel. The independent variable, it was different groupings. 
different working distance and different angles. So by looking at the result of ANOVA, we see a significant effect of all main effect, and also we see a significant interaction of angle with curving and also angle with working distance. So by looking at the at this result, we could see there is a significant effect of tilting angle. And because there is a significant interaction, we could say that imaging angle exacerbates the dependence of millimeter size of pixel on its spatial location. We run a different analysis to quantify the effect, and the figure is showing the result. So this line corresponds to the imaging angle of zero, and basically we see that the two ends, they have similar pixel sizes. It is a symmetrical round point zero. But as the imaging angle increases, for example, this line is 15 degree angle, we see that the two ends, they have quite these similar pixel sizes, and the shape is quite asymmetric. Also, the points that has the minimum pixel size corresponds to the point with maximum spatial resolution. So at zero imaging angle, it is at the center of the image, but as imaging angle changes, the point moves toward one of other directions. And finally, we see the magnitude of distortion increases with the magnitude of the tilting angle. In conclusion, flexible endoscopy leads to nonlinear image distortion. Variation in the imaging angle exacerbate the effect of nonlinear distortion. Unfortunately, unlike a scale on conventional map, we cannot measure size of a lesion in the image and then multiply it with a constant number to get its millimeter size. The analysis showed that the combined effect could lead to as high as 65% error in horizontal measurement. And finally, the horizontal calibration should account for dependence of the pixel on its spatial location. If you are interested to see how we could account for a special, for effect of a spatial location during calibration, come and see our other presentation in this virtual venue. The funding for this research was provided by Michigan State University Foundation, CAP CSC 2020 PhD Scholarship, and National Institute of Health. Also, we would like to thank Dr. Hillman and Dr. Mehta for their discussion on the importance of uh, image distortion in flexible endoscopy. Thank you very much for your kind attention.